We have some current trainees in the program, so it's great to see all of you. Um, and I appreciate you having your camera on. And speaking of which, all of you prospective students, if you're comfortable turning on your cameras, we'd love it. Thank you. Um, we love to see live people, not just names. If you can't do it, we totally understand, but I appreciate those of you already turning on your cameras. It makes you human, um, which we really appreciate and enjoy getting to know. Um, okay, so then we're going to have some Q&A at the end and then just some closing remarks. Next slide, please. So I'd like to just make some introductions. Um, as I said, I'm Pam Templer. I'm director of the Urban Program. I'm going to be calling on the following people. We could just go in this order so you can each introduce yourself. Heather, Emma, Sasha, Samantha, and then Sean. And um, Heather's going to put in the chat what to say so you don't have to remember. Please provide your name, your pronouns, your affiliation with Urban, the specific PhD program you're a part of, and what year you're at in the program. And then just a quick one sentence summary of your research um, and any urban environmental challenge that you're either already focusing on or you plan to in the future. Um, so, Heather, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Oh, Heather, you're muted. <laughs> Oh, of course, that has to happen at least once every meeting. Um, right. My name is Heather Ho, and my pronouns are she, hers, and I'm the program manager of BU Urban. I've been here um, over a year now, um, and yeah, my role in the program is um, overseeing the um, administration, um, daily and long-term function of the program, um, as well as providing student support, um, partnership and program development support. So yeah, I think that's me in a nutshell. Handing it over to Emma. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Emma Conrad Rooney. I use they, them pronouns. I'm a third year PhD student in the biology department and also a third year trainee with Urban. And I'm interested in how climate change impacts the ability for forests to take up carbon, but also interested in atmospheric deposition in urban and rural areas. Um, and I'm also in the Templar lab. Um, and I'll, I'll pass it to Sasha. Hi everyone, I'm Sasha Gilmore, pronouns she, hers. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student in the Earth and Environment Department, as well as a third year urban trainee. Um, and my research is focusing on marine and terrestrial heat waves and how um, them as a whole impact urban coastal communities, um, like their subsistence living and things like that. Um, and I will pass it on to Sam. Hi, I'm Sam. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a third year PhD candidate in environmental health and a third year urban trainee. I um, study, I'm interested in the health of food producers, and I study um, a longitudinal cohort study in Nicaragua of mostly children of sugarcane workers. And I um, also work with soil and compost contaminants that um, community gardeners use in the Boston area. I'll pass it to Sean. Thanks, Sam. Hi, I'm Sean Muller. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a fourth year urban trainee and PhD student in the School of Public Health um, in the Department of Environmental Health. And my research is really focusing on modeling the spatial and temporal concentrations of particulate matter. And I'm particularly interested in the smallest particles, the ultrafines. Pam, I'll pass it back to you, thanks. Awesome, thanks to all of you. Um, now I'm gonna invite everybody who's on this call to use the chat to introduce yourselves, all the prospective students. And Heather's gonna put the prompts there, but we ask you to please include your name, the pronouns you prefer to use, um, where you're joining us from, and the PhD program you're applying for. Of course, all of you are here because you're interested in urban, but here at Boston University, you would specifically apply to a department. Um, that's where you'd get your PhD, and then the urban program is an umbrella interdisciplinary program. So when we ask you about the specific program, we're talking about the department that you plan to apply for or the one that you've already applied for. Thank you so much. All right, Heather, next slide, please. So now what I'm gonna do is just provide a brief overview of the urban program and why we think you'd all enjoy it. Next slide, please. So this is a picture that includes um, the first five of our six cohorts in the urban program. Um, BU Urban was established in 2017 with a $3 million grant from the US National Science Foundation Research Traineeship Program, which is a mouthful, that stands for NRT. 
And the National Science Foundation launched the NRT programs with the goal of transforming graduate education to be more interdisciplinary and solutions oriented and to prepare graduate students for diverse career paths. So six, since 2017, we've had six cohorts with between eight to 12 individuals. Next slide, please. This slide now shows, um, which you'll see, the current cohort that began just this last fall. Um, you can see the students who are present and they're wonderful. Um, we have eight trainees in their first year. They span the departments of biology, earth and environment, environmental health, as well as computing and data sciences. Next slide, please. So here I'm showing you pictures of the four of us who make up the leadership team. You've already met Heather and I. We also have Lucy Hutira from the Department of Earth and Environment, as well as John Levy from the Department of Environmental Health. Um, there are two associate directors, so they're quite active in the program as well. Next slide, please. So now I'm gonna just give you a brief overview of the program and what we um, think of as our mission and our goals. So our ultimate goal here is to prepare PhD students to tackle urban environmental challenges using interdisciplinary and a co-production approach centered on partnerships with government, non-governmental organizations, and the private sector. So as I said at the beginning, you would get your PhD from your home department. That's where you would get all of your disciplinary technical expertise, and you'd have to follow your home department's um, requirements, but we're the umbrella program that is on top of all these other programs. We center this program on the intersection of biogeoscience and environmental health. You can see that in the circle. And the idea we have is that biogeoscience in general is looking at how humans are impacting the environment and environmental health is looking at how those changes in the environment feed back to affect human health. So we have students that span biogeoscience, environmental health, um, as well as, like I said, math and statistics and computing and data sciences. And we do this work mostly at the interface of air, water, and climate, but we also look at other things like noise pollution and other um, factors that are changing the environment and impacting human health. Next slide, please. Our vision is to create a diverse workforce of scientists and practitioners equipped with the technical knowledge and communication skills necessary for building a sustainable, healthy, and equitable future. Um, we take this really seriously. We want to prepare all our students for any career that they choose for themselves. And I'll, I'll give you some examples of how we do that in a moment. Next slide, please. And we do this by striving all along to be an inclusive and welcoming community where all members develop a sense of belonging and truly thrive. Um, we take this goal really seriously and we're always looking for feedback. We do this a variety of ways throughout the program, um, always challenging, our, challenging ourselves um, to make students feel as welcome as possible. Next slide, please. So just to give you a sense of what the program itself is, what does it mean to be an urban student? Um, we have courses in biogeoscience, environmental health, statistics, data analysis, and a first year colloquium. That first year colloquium is really important for bringing the cohort together. So all first year students are required to take that. We bring in faculty, postdocs, and staff from across the university for the students to meet so that they get a sense of who potentially could be on their PhD committees, who could they collaborate with, who could they go to for support. We also provide workshops in urban governance, professional development, and science communication. Um, these are really our flagship workshops that we have each year. Um, all first-year students are required to take them. And going on in the second year and beyond, we ask students to do at least one of these workshops per year. But we understand once students get to their second year and beyond, they're often very very busy with their own dissertation work, but we do everything we can to keep the urban trainees involved throughout the lifetime um, of their program here at Boston University. All students are required to complete an internship with government, non-governmental organizations, and the private sector. Heather is going to talk about this a bit more in a few minutes, and then each of the trainees who you were just introduced to are going to share with you their experience and their internships. We do a lot of relationship building with local partners here in Boston and surrounding areas. Um, and in the program, you'd have a community of peers motivated by environmental justice, which has become an increasingly important component of the program. We provide research and travel awards um, for interdisciplinary projects and presentations at conferences. And like I said before, we're really aiming to prepare students for diverse career paths. We're not settled on just one, whether it's academia, government, non-government, or the private sector. We want to help prepare you for all of them. Next, please. 
This is just to give you a sense of what our programming looks like. Um, we've shared with you here the flyer we made for last spring's calendar and this semester's calendar, just to give you a sense of what it looks like. We try to be really mindful to spread out the events so they're not all in one week throughout the semester, but rather we have just one or two events throughout the semester. So if you look on the right at the fall 2023 calendar, um, you can see when the, the newest cohort started um, on September 6th, we have the introductory workshop, which is where we always get our cohort picture each year. Um, we take people, we take the students on a tour, we tell them all about the program, um, and it's just a really fun day. Um, we also had pastries with Pam. We try to have this once in the fall and the spring, which is just a fun event. We had 30 people um, at this event in October that just were standing around outside in the lawn having yummy coffee and pastries with us. Um, you can see the deadline in the fall for the research and travel awards. Um, we had a mentoring and proactive communication professional development workshop. Once a semester, we have our fall faculty meeting so that faculty from across the participating departments can provide their input. Um, coming up tomorrow is our research translation science communication workshop that we're really excited about. That's going to be with the director of the BU Initiative on Cities. And then, like I said, we really try to get a lot of feedback a variety of ways. So every semester we end with an advisor and trainee feedback session. We also have anonymous sessions um, and websites so that people can provide feedback whenever they'd like. Next slide, please. So this is just to give you a sense of some of our um, events um, starting in spring 2022 and continuing in 23 and we'll have it again in spring 24. We have our urban professional networking fair um, this just shows you some of the partners who came to the last one it's turned out to be a really fun event. We invite students and faculty and staff from across the university to join us. Um, it's a very a fun event where members come from these different organizations and we're timing it this spring in 2024 specifically to give students enough time to meet some of these partners and consider them as hosts for their internship should they want to do it next summer. Um, so this has been just a really fun event that we're excited to keep going in the spring. Next slide, please. And then I'll just mention that we often now do um, urban science policy trips as well. In June 22, we brought a bunch of students to Washington, D.C., where they met with congressional staffers and think tanks and other um, people like in federal government agencies. Um, this last June, we had a trip to the Massachusetts State House where we got to visit some uh, members of the House. We got to watch a hearing um, and it was just a really fun day. And so we're planning to do this again next June. Next slide. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Heather, who's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the BU internship um, aspect of our program. Thanks so much, Heather. All right, thank you so much, Pam, for that great introduction on the foundations of the program. And so continuing along, I wanted to share with you about the BU Urban Internship, which is a big draw. And um, from your questions that you shared when you registered, this is something that many of you are interested in. Um, and so the Urban Internship is um, an important experiential learning opportunity for urban trainees to address um, urban environmental challenges in real world contexts using a co-production approach um, as a partner with nonprofits, government entities, and um, private organizations as well. Um, and as you can see here, um, in addition to that, you can gain exposure to potential career paths um, and expand your networks. Um, and there's also uh, a companion course that is um, hosted by Urban in order to provide additional professional de development and support. Um, and just for context, the internships are a minimum of 80 hours and they can take place at any point um, during the PhD experience. Um, and we have um, over the years, built up our network of partners. Um, we are at about 38 and growing. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, they include government entities, um, NGOs, um, and the private sector. Um, and over 20 trainees have completed internships um, since the start of our program. And um, this summer, urban internship, these are our urban internship partners, and nine trainees started, continued, and or completed their internships. So um, yeah, and so we wanted to sh give you the chance to hear directly from trainees who've um, um, already done their internships. Um, and so I'm really happy to introduce Emma Conrad Rooney and Samantha Hall, who will talk about their internship experiences. Um, Emma completed their internship in just fall 2022 um, and spring 2023 with the US Global Change Research Program. 
um, based out of DC, and Sam completed her internship in summer of 2022 with Trustees of Reservations. So I think Emma is going to um, start off. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Emma. Awesome. Thanks so much, Heather. Yeah, so I'll be talking today about the internship that I conducted with the U.S. Global Change Research Program, where I did a review of nature-related topics in the third order draft of the fifth National Climate Assessment. And the National Climate Ex Assessment is a unique opportunity for scientists and social scientists from a range of disciplines and sectors, from government agencies to academia to private sector and NGOs, to come together and synthesize the current body of knowledge about climate change and its effects on the United States and the projections for the future. So next slide. Background for, um, would you mind just, yeah, go to the next slide, awesome. <laughs> um, I'll just talk. So, um, so for some background about um, my internship specifically, nature um, has been prioritized by the Biden-Harris administration, um, including committing to the first U.S. national nature assessment back in April 2022. But nature itself is a really broad term with neither a standard definition nor a framework for covering it in current federal reports. So having a standardized language and framework for nature would help federal agencies and other sectors better identify, protect, restore, and promote nature and help solve climate change and other challenges. Next slide. So where I came in was during the public comment period on the third order draft of the fifth national climate assessment, which was just recently released, um, I conducted a nature-related vocabulary and thematic search um, to understand how nature was covered in the fifth NCA and to um, develop recommendations for improving consistency in how nature was addressed, to inform coverage of nature-related content in current and future national climate assessment writing processes, and also to provide recommendations for the development of the first national nature assessment. Next slide. For deliverables, um, I did both a, a combination. I don't know if there's a next slide that actually lists the deliverables. It, it should be there. Um, yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah, so um, I shared analyses and recommendations through both presentations and memos. So I presented uh, virtually to the Federal Steering Committee of the National Nature Assessment. Thank you. And I presented I'm in person in DC at the fifth National Climate Assessment all author meeting, which is uh, in the photo here. Um, and, and then I also shared um, memos with the National Nature Assessment Director, Phil Levin, and the National Climate, the fifth National Climate Assessment Director, Allison Crimmins. Next slide. So for future directions, I've already shared feedback during the public comment period on the draft prospectus of the National Nature Assessment. And in December, I'll be going to San Francisco to present a poster at the American Geophysical Union annual meeting as part of a fifth National Climate Assessment poster session. And I hope to stay involved with future NCA or NNA processes if possible. And happy to answer questions at the end. Uh, acknowledgements. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Emma. And over to you, Sam. Great. Thank you. Um, I am going to be talking about my, my internship titled Evaluating Boston's Organic Waste Cycles, Keeping Compost Clean for Community Gardens, which I completed with the Trustees of Reservations or the Trustees um, two summers ago. Next. Thanks. I think there's a lot of animation, so sorry in advance, Heather. Um, I, yeah, so just some background and history on this situation that I was working on. Um, researchers at the Boston University School of Public Health have been working with the trustees for more than the last decade on keeping um, compost and soil that community gardeners are using as safe as possible with safety contaminants or safety hazards mostly being um, heavy metals that we're concerned about. And the um, Boston city actually has contracts that um, collects organic waste and then uh, companies deliver the finished compost to gardeners. And so that program has been happening for several years. It's a great program, although gardeners raised concerns maybe 10 years ago with the quality and safety of the compost that they were being delivered. Um, the compost was not doing very well and seemed to be have, having trash in it. And so um, next, thank you. We, uh, not me, but members of USPH started investigating the content of the compost and composition and actually found very, very high levels of lead, which enacted them to um, 
write a letter to the city and provide resources to city contractors for ways that we can protect our compost. This actually was next a perspective that was written up in Environmental Health Perspectives. So you can check out that um, article if you want to know more about the story. Next. Thank you. Um, you can just make this slide whole. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> so uh, very broadly, this project was looking at the collection of organic waste, by that I mean food and yard waste, into um, safe compost, and then that compost being delivered to community or gardeners or urban growers, and whether that was accessible or not. So we were looking at food justice, waste justice, and, and broadly environmental justice as components to this system. Um, thank you, next. Several partners were involved and um, not just those listed here, but these were the ones that we focused on for this internship. Next. So I delivered uh, several products through this internship um, to the trustees. I wrote up a case study on policy and community works and programs surrounding the process of organic waste collection, compost production, and urban food production, which I did by reviewing four different cities, San Francisco, Seattle, New York City, and Boston. Um, three of these cities are in states that have state level legislation re relating to content of compost used to grow food. Massachusetts is not one of those states, and so that will kind of come into play later. Um, next. For the community, we released a best management practice document, which outlined um, several resources for how to think about creation of a system like this, where we're creating organic waste and cycling the nutrients back through community through food production. Um, this was meant to be applicable to cities at different stages of this process. And so that was just a resource that we put out. Um, next, thank you. We also wrote a letter to the mayor advocating for stricter contracts um, related to compost feedstock and compost testing in the Boston area. And we've made ourselves um, available and are very excited to work with uh, the Boston Public Works Department and the mayor's office on increasing the um, safety of this really great, great program. Thank you. Next, we also recently had a perspective, a commentary accepted in environmental health perspectives um, on this topic, which we hope will broaden the, the conversation about what organic waste cycle means. Next, thank you. Um, so really like our future work in this area is related to inclusion of so many different partners um, with food growers, especially in focus, as well as city um, city offices and state regulators to um, increase the sustainability of these programs as well as the safety. And we're really advocating for contracts with explicit language surrounding compost feedstock. So what goes into compost, how we are testing compost to know what really is actually in the finished compost and then equity and distribution. Um, and so thank you. Yep. And there's uh, several acknowledgements. Thanks. For that, Sam and Emma. Um, and if um, any of the those in attendance have questions to follow up, you can feel free to um, ask them in the chat and um, perhaps Emma and Sam can respond in the chat as well. Um, and I just wanted to bring attention to um, the fact that we have on our website this internship impacts page and you can see um, the QR code and the link um, within this presentation. Um, so you're more than welcome to visit that um, and to see what other internship projects um, our trainees have been a part of. Um, and I also wanted to mention that, um, to emphasize that when um, urban trainees are doing their internships, that there's the um, urban internship course that I mentioned at the outset. Um, and that, again, it, it provides professional development and incorporates opportunities for mutual learning and support. Um, and speaking of support, um, joining urban also means joining a community of peers, as Pam said, from a diverse range of backgrounds who are all motivated by environmental justice. Um, and we're really intentional, as Pam mentioned, about cultivating a cohesive and inclusive community. Um, and so again, this is just to present, um, Pam mentioned the pastries for Pam, pastries with Pam, <laughs> not for Pam, um, but that's um, a picture of that. Um, and then um, the picture underneath is when we took a tour of the brand new state of the art um, um, computing and data sciences building here on campus um, to learn more about um, the, that project. Um, and then we also co-sponsor events with um, graduate student organizations that trainees are a part of. Um, for example, most recently um, with OSTEM, we held a documentary viewing of um, a documentary called Fire and Flood, Queer Resilience in the Era of Climate Change. Um, we have 
um, loosely structured group check-ins, office hours, um, and as I mentioned, the feedback opportunities at the end of each term. Um, another important value of urban is um, our commitment to broadening participation in STEM and improving access and inclusion in graduate education. Um, so we have active recruitment focused on professional conferences and minority serving institutions. Um, and as Pam mentioned, we, and we always try to do our best to ensure programming policies and operations are inclusive, accessible and support all students. And we never see this as a, a place where we are done. We're always striving to improve this um, and open to feedback. And then also we do community outreach to um, local middle and high schools, um, as well as um, for example, we reached out to Mass Audubon Environmental Fellows um, who, um, in order to help them better understand the process of um, how to apply to graduate school. Um, and the fellowship is especially for those um, in the environmental and conservation fields um, who are young professionals with identities that have been historically underrepresented. And Sam was actually part of that as well. Um, and then I wanted to, um, have Sasha speak to us next um, about her um, attendance at SACNIS, National Diversity and STEM Conference, which is the largest multidisciplinary and multicultural STEM diversity event in the country. Um, and she's gonna share about her experience, her focus on broadening participation and how this relates to her involvement with urban. So over to you, Sasha. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, so like Heather mentioned, I'll be starting off talking about SACNIS. So this conference happened in Portland just last month. Um, and SACNIS itself is an inclusive organization dedicated to fostering the success of Chicanos and Hispanics and Native Americans, uh, from college students to professionals and attending advanced degrees, careers, and positions of leadership in STEM. Um, so my goal for attending the ND in STEM conference this year was to connect with fellow academics, conducting research that aids their own communities, similar to the environmental and climate justice work that I plan to follow for my dissertation. Um, so I became immersed in the collaborative and supportive culture that SACNIS fosters, from those in undergrad to graduate students like myself to avid researchers. Um, so I attended numerous seminars while there and workshops that helped inform my current journey and the opportunities that are out there once I received my PhD, um, some that I had never even considered or was knowledgeable about. Um, and this is my first year actually attending the yearly conference as the BU chapter was just founded last year by fellow urban trainees that you saw on the previous slide. Um, and through my attendance, I got the chance to broaden my Engagement with urban is I was able to share the work that we as a multi-class cohort do and how it tackles urban environmental challenges through the use of interdisciplinary methods. Um, so those in attendance stem from a plethora of fields and spheres, from the government to non-governmental organizations, all the way to the private sector. And this conference helped me better visualize how our collaborations through urban are important both to ourselves and the communities around us to build a sustainable, healthy, and equitable future. Um, and being a part of urban has impacted my ability to build my voice. Um, I was first connected with the Union of Concerned Scientists who put on this panel that I was on um, through the urban science policy trip held in DC that Heather mentioned back in 2022. Um, and at that science policy trip, we received training in science policy and how it translates our research to policymakers and also how to voice our concerns and suggest the solutions um, to those on, on the Hill. Um, and prior to that experience, I didn't really have a huge background in policy. I didn't really think it was the route I would take in research or career-wise. Um, however, I did realize that building my voice takes many forms. So in terms of the panel itself, I was able to help others do the same by showing them that you can start anywhere. So some of the major tips that we gave um, revolved around the UCS mission. So the Union of Concerned Scientists, it's a national nonprofit organization whose mission is to put rigorous independent science into action by developing solutions and advocating for a healthy, safe, and just future. Um, so we laid that foundation by defining advocacy, service, and expert guidance, and then delved into an activity on how to build local engagement. Um, so you can garner the help of your local community, or you can join an academic one as well, um, or you can even go solo and still have an enormous impact. Um, and learning alongside those with the same mission at Urban has only fueled this passion for policy, as well as the support and foundation that the program has built for us to follow that path. Um, and the elements of Urban itself that are most relevant to my interests in engaging advocacy using science began with the coursework that is required throughout the program. Um, so without it, I may have never taken a class at the School of Public Health or have taken the Urban Climate course that kind of propelled my research interests to where they are now. Um, I've also learned a multitude of methods that I can apply myself, uh, methods that I had and become proficient in during my time in undergrad, um, but those which have served me my, greatly and that I've been able to build um, through my past three years at BU. And this interdisciplinary approach has only helped uh, my progress throughout my time here. Um, also the workshops that BU holds, 
Um, our relevant topics and methods have also helped me connect with others with similar interests. So whether they're those in the cohort um, or other groups that BU has partnered with, um, and it makes those connections that I never would have made otherwise. Um, and lastly, being introduced to the faculty and students in all three departments has aided me to view climate issues through lenses apart from my own in the Earth and Environment Department. Um, and all these culmination have led me to become a well-rounded and informed individual um, that I think makes me capable enough to voice my views and advocate for what I stand for in terms of like climate and environmental policy. Thank you. Thanks, Sasha. I, sorry, I'm gonna try to turn the lights back on. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'll just be in the dark. Um, Thank you so much for sharing. I, I um, personally find it so fulfilling to hear about your journey and the growth that you've experienced. And you, in your story, you really highlight how, how um, you know, breaking down silos, connecting across disciplines. Um, many of the things you mentioned in, involved um, working with different partners, um, partner agencies. So um, along that vein, I wanted to mention that um, a huge part of Urban is promoting equity and environmental justice through community partnerships. And I wanted to highlight one partnership in particular, um, the project on mapping tree equity with um, the nonprofit Speak for the Trees Boston. Um, so Bio Urban established a collaboration with Speak for the Trees Boston, um, which was actually a former urban internship host organization through um, environmental protection agency funded project titled Community Tree Stories. Um, and so the project um, involved working with three community based organizations to co-develop a series of community tree walks in Boston metro area communities, Mattapan, Dorchester, and East Boston. Um, and it included residents, municipal officials, and researchers. Um, and the goal was to explore and deepen their understanding of the intersections of environmental justice, clean air, and tree, ca tree canopy cover. Um, and urban trainees, um, Jessica Wright, um, Sean Mueller and Kath Katie Atherton, um, and Sean is here with us today, um, developed educational content for the walks, um, which was rooted in their expertise on topics um, on gas leaks, air quality, and soil microbial health, respectively. Um, and Sean's expertise is in air quality. Um, and so the aim of this was to improve public understanding of tree equity and the influence of trees on public health, to empower communities that seek to better engage with and care for the urban forest um, and develop stronger relationships between nonprofit organizations, community organizations, researchers, and decision makers that are involved in the urban forest. So Sean played a pivotal role in the project, um, which started in spring of 2022 and ended in summer of 2023. Um, and I just wanted to um, invite Sean to, um, as a trainee and PhD student, highlight what were what was your main takeaway from being part of this collaboration, if something comes to mind? Sure. Thanks, Heather. Um, so as Heather said, my role in this project was to really be the, the scientific expert, which was really cool, and to basically describe the relationship between air quality and trees. Um, and so what was really powerful for me about this experience was seeing so many different sectors come together for a common cause. So this was a coalition of the federal government, nonprofit, advocacy, citizen scientists, and then me from academia. Um, this is how it's supposed to work, all these groups coming together. So that was really powerful. Um, and for me, you know, you can see in the middle picture there, um, what was great was not just giving a formal presentation, but going on these community walks. So you can see in the middle picture, um, I'm there on the right describing um, some of the associations between air quality and tree and then human health. Um, and it was great to kind of get out of that ivory tower of academia and really see a tangible impact and talk with the community members. So I'd say that was a major takeaway um, from this project. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, and so we're heading into looking at the urban pathway and more of the details about the requirements, timeline, and milestones. Um, and so just to break it down a little bit more for you, because we've described a lot of different components, but how do they actually fit together? So year one is really a foundational year when you first join the urban program. Um, and we want to present you with the tools you'll need to make the most of your urban experience. So we start off, as Pam mentioned, with the fall colloquium course. 
Um, and that's an introduction to the fields of biogeoscience and environmental health. Um, you have weekly readings, discussions, and presentations from faculty who are doing the research here at um, in these departments in the biogeoscience program and environmental health. Um, and then well, there's also the workshops that Pam had touched upon in science communication, urban governance, professional development, and we also have an annual symposium. Um, and then in year two and beyond, um, you would continue the coursework in biogeoscience, environmental health, um, math and statistics, or computing and data science to meet those requirements. Um, you start to form an interdisciplinary faculty committee for your dissertation. Um, and then you're required to only attend one workshop, but you're more than welcome to go to as many as you want and to make the most of your experience here. And then um, attending the annual symposium and then starting to think about your internship um, and doing the internship course. Again, it doesn't have to be done in your second year. It's at any point that you can do your internship. Um, and just to highlight what is the urban difference. Um, so let's imagine that I'm a hypothetical student interested in cardiovascular outcomes in relation to urban green space. So in this scenario, I'm not in urban. So I come to Boston University, I study and do research and I graduate and I'm very, very happy. Now, if I were in urban, um, I'd have the same research interests. I come to BU, I join the urban program, I'd study and do research, but this time I would be surrounded by all the program elements that we mentioned. And I graduate and I'm very happy. So we see urban as a supplementary layer of resources, opportunities, and support that surround and enhance your PhD experience. And we have the requirements in place to ensure that you're cultivating relevant skills and knowledge and accessing experiential learning opportunities. But the prog program is also flexible and provides the support for you to create your own path. So now you're going to hear from Sean again as he shares his experience of creating his own pathway and fostering ideas into action through urban. Thanks, Heather. So my story is that I've I've always kind of struggled with where I belong, like academically, meaning that my interests straddle um, public health as well as atmospheric sciences. And these are traditionally two separate departments. And although my home department is public health, through the urban uh, opportunities and seminar series that Heather was describing, I was exposed to researchers and methods beyond what's just offered in my home department. And it really encouraged and gave me the resources to develop my own research project. Um, specifically, I was able to connect and receive mentorship from several faculty members with diverse backgrounds um, and research interests, which helped me develop my own research project. And I applied and won independent funding for this research project with all of this support. Um, you can see on the slide the title of my grant, and I included this just to show the different affiliations where you can see my home department of um, public health, as well as sponsorship from Earth and Environment. Um, and I just wanted to talk briefly about this project that we were trying to do, which is testing low cost methods for measuring particles in the air, because typically these monitors are hundreds of thousands of dollars and not really conducive to community monitoring. So you can see on the photo on the left, it's me and my advisor um, setting up monitors on a chilly Boston winter roof. Um, and these monitors would collect the particles in the air. And then we would use a really powerful microscope to examine the particles. And so you can see images of that um, on the, the bottom right. So as someone that's been studying particles for a long time that you can't see with your eye, it was really amazing to actually design this project so that we can visualize something that feels very abstract. And finally, I'm, I'm really happy to announce that I'll be presenting this work, which is three, four years in the making, um, in two weeks at AGU, which is the American Geophysical Union. This is going to be in San Francisco in two weeks. And if anyone here is attending, I'm going to put my email in the chat if you want to connect, um, if you're going to be in San Francisco, or you just want to email me at another time. But just to summarize everything that I've tried to put out here, Urban offers a lot of opportunities. And specifically, what I wanted to highlight is this first year course series, because it helped me draft my own uh, research projects and kind of fit these varied research interests together into a project um, and extend my skills beyond typically what I just would have received 
from my home department alone. So I'm really grateful for all that. Thank you so much, Sean. Again, like bringing to life the urban experience and hearing it directly from you. I hope that's helpful for those who are attending today. Um, I really appreciate how you've um, summarized how beneficial those um, initial program elements were. Um, and so now we are moving into the Q&A. So we've done a lot of talking and now we get to hear from you. Um, please feel free to drop your questions um, in the chat. So I'm having a little problem with my cursor today. So <laughs> it's a little wild. Um, let me try to send this. Okay. Okay, back to this. Um, yeah. So we, uh, many of you have shared um, questions with us already. So um, I we can use those as a jumping off point. Um, and um, if you think of additional questions, please feel free again to um, you know, chat and we'll go in order. Um, and while you're thinking of that, I'm gonna start us all off by asking um, why, um, what initially drew you to um, BU Urban? Sorry, again, problem with my, why did we choose BU Urban? And I'm gonna let um, the trainees unmute and jump in. Um, yeah, I can start. So um, in undergrad, I majored in both environmental studies and geography. So I kind of already had that kind of like viewpoint where um, I wanted to kind of combine two fields into the research I was doing. Um, so once I got into BU, I got an email about BU Urban and after like reading the mission and everything, I kind of thought it was the perfect fit. Um, I knew that my dissertation would focus around communities. At the time, I didn't know necessarily like the urban community, um, but I knew I wanted to kind of give back to where I would do research at. Um, so I thought that was a perfect opportunity. I didn't really have a background in public health or biology, but being in the program has kind of gave me that ability to look at issues um, from different lenses um, and see like different ways to kind of solve issues that would require different methods, different kind of department views. Um, so that was like one of the main reasons I chose Be Urban. Um, and just like the collaboration aspect, I thought it was really cool that like people from different cohorts, like different years, and also people from different departments would be able to collaborate on projects together if they wanted to. Um, you can work with different professors from different departments, uh, which if I had just stayed in Earth and Environment without being in Be Urban, um, maybe that would have been possible, but it would have definitely been more difficult to make those connections. Um, so I think Bee Urban has really helped with that aspect um, of my research and just like the classes I was able to take. Muted. Did anybody else want to answer that question? I, I guess I can, can go quickly. So um, I knew that my my undergraduate um, degree is in biology, and I knew that I wanted to study forest ecosystems, um, but I also knew that I wanted to gain additional skills in how to apply the research that I was doing and be able to interact with more um, sectors kind of outside of academia. And so I was really drawn to the urban program, both in terms of all of the um, training and the courses um, that I um, could experience, as well as the internship and having that structure to be able to do an internship um, outside of academia um, was something that I was really interested in. Um, and I see a question in the chat. Um, can you talk a little more about how you chose or got your inter internship? Um, how the initial connection happened? Um, how the program facilitates that? I think broadly, because I, um, if if um, anybody wants to know more about like the details, they're more than welcome to reach out to, to me. Mm -hmm. Emma, you unmuted. Do you want to go ahead? Oh, I did, but then I wasn't sure if I should talk about my personal experience or um go for it go for it yeah so I guess just like very briefly um Pam my advisor is uh, the principal one of the principal investigators of an organization called yeah the youth environmental alliance and higher education sorry it's a bit of a long story but anyway um this this group helps to facilitate including youth um, and college students in learning about 
um, international environmental negotiations and other science policy type work. And so I've been involved with this group. And through that, I met Alison Crimmins as she was the keynote speaker at a conference we were organizing. And then through the spring urban colloquium class, we had to do informational interviews. And one was with someone outside of um, BU and outside of academia. And so I was terrified. But anyway, I reached out to Alison Crimmins to see if I could do an informational interview with her. Um, and then through that also asked if by any chance she had any internship um, options. So yeah, that's my story. Um, I can jump into about that. Um, I can, was continue, I did some work with the trustees during my master's with my mentor during my MPH, um, and then was really excited to keep working with that um, organization on a new project that they had for me. And so my MPH mentor helped me transition um, that project into uh, you know, a, my proposal for my internship. And then folks at Urban were very helpful in kind of like setting a boundary for what internship is and um, the important like kind of elements there. I would just say also that my work is almost only with rural populations for my dissertation. And I am really passionate about urban compost. And so er being an urban trainee was kind of like one of the only ways that I got to continue that work. And so it was a really, really helpful avenue for me to um, to have support on a project that I wouldn't have been able to do um, if I wasn't in urban. Thanks so much, um, Sam and Emma. Um, and Grace says, thank you, that's helpful. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna drop a few questions in the chat that were from the registration. Um, they are all around the theme of balancing the added requirements with your PhD program. I think that's a question that a lot of people wonder about. So if you, you wanna jump in, so the questions are how you balance the extra requirements with research and dissertation writing, how do urban students manage the course load? So you, yeah, it, are you experiencing difficulty tackling both programs? So I welcome any of the trainees who wanna talk about that. I guess if anyone else doesn't want to talk, um, I have not found it particularly challenging. Like the, I'm in the biology department and a lot of the requirements for biology and urban um, were able to, I'm able to get courses to count for multiple. So I think I found the requirements to be quite flexible. Um, and I think like one additional course that I wouldn't have taken if I went, wasn't in the urban program was an environmental health course. And I got to take one on climate change and health equity, which was super interesting. And I, I feel like really added to um, my knowledge base. And I, in terms of additional requirements, I think the internship is the only um, requirement that really takes additional time, but it's so incredibly cool. And I think um, is a really special addition. Um, but it, you have you can do that at any point during your PhD. So you're, it, it's it's possible to find a time that that works for you. Yeah, I would agree. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. go ahead, Sasha. You get um, yeah, I would just like add on a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't hard to like fit in those extra requirements. Um, I was actually glad that I was able to take those extra classes that I would have never thought to take. Um, and then also regarding the urban internship, like I haven't done my internship yet, but I plan to do it next semester. Um, so you could definitely like just fit it in when you're able to. It doesn't have to be like a mandatory, like after your first year of summer, second year of summer or anything like that. So I think that's really cool that it's very flexible like that. Um, any other classes, it's not too much. Um, I'm actually in my last semester of classes, so finishing all of those requirements up. Um, but yeah, definitely not hard to balance, um, just a little bit of an add on to your coursework that's required from your department. Thanks, Sean. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to reiterate um, flexibility, I think, is the is the key word where, yes, there are some additional. I will use the word requirements, but I've found that it helped make me more well-rounded. Right. Instead of just taking what my department offers. Right. I'm interested in air quality. So it was a no brainer for me to go to another department and take an atmospheric chemistry course, right? Um, and that was allowed, that was facilitated, that was encouraged through urban. So I think of it as more opening doors 
than being kind of a restrictive, oh, you have to do all of this. Um, and it's absolutely helped me now that I'm in my dissertation phase and I have all these other mentors and connections and skills from these classes that I took um, and the Urban Colloquium series. Thank you. Um, thanks so much. So um, I see a question in the chat. Um, how many seats are in our PhD program? So I just wanted to emphasize that um, the graduate the urban um, graduate program in, sorry, I, I urban <laughs> biogeoscience and environmental health. I said urban a lot. Um, so we are a program that overlays multiple PhD programs. So we in and of ourselves are not a degree granting program. I wanted to make that clear. So you have to apply to a doctoral degree granting program to get in, to be eligible, to be accepted into our program. And we do not have a limit on the number of seats. Um, so, and I think this ties into the next question of, should we apply for urban along with the PhD application? Absolutely. So you fill out the application at the same time, but we on our end, um, in the background, we have to wait to see if you get in before we can offer you um, um, admission, if you're a good fit for our program. Does that make sense? Because if we offer you admission to urban and you weren't to not be accepted into a PhD program, then you wouldn't be able to join the program. So I hope that that's helpful. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Well, um, this is kind of a fun question. We have, um, I think about just under five minutes left. What does your average week look like as an urban trainee? I, th I think this is an interesting question because it's more like you're, you're a PhD student. I, I don't know how the elements of urban weave into your experience. So I'm not sure if that's a difficult question to answer, but, but I think it's a good question. So I'm gonna throw it out there. What does your average week look like? I can take a, a, a run at that question. Um, I think it really depends on the year that you're in. In my experience, um, I came in my first year of my PhD as a first year urban student. And um, so I spent you know, more time during my week involved in taking the colloquium class and working on assignments. Um, so more time in my first year during the week than I did in my second year. Um, and I would say, that now as a, as a third year student, I am involved in multiple um, events per semester. And I would, so I kind of think more on a semester basis than a weekly basis is, has kind of been my experience. All right. Um, and then another question um, that was from the registra registrants, um, are there opportunities for financial support such as scholarships, assistantships, or research grants? What resources are available to help students fund their research or attend conferences? I think some of you can speak to this one. Yeah, um, I've applied multiple times for travel funding to attend um, conferences to present either my personal research or work based on the internship that I did. Um, so I've gotten funding to go to the Ecological Society of America conference and then the American Geophysical Union conference. And that is super valuable. Um, I haven't, there is also research um, a travel or research. There's the travel grants and then research grants that you can apply to, but I personally have not applied to those. And I'll emphasize that um, we award the um, research and travel awards based on different um, um, criteria, such as, you know, is it an interdisciplinary, um, does it have interdisciplinary elements? Does it deal with urban environmental challenges? So basically like how well does it align with the mission of our program, so. Um, oh, I think you're muted. I was gonna say, I think we have, okay. Um, I might move on to the next part of our um, um, session, our info session right now, um, which is, um, and if anybody has additional um, 
questions, please feel free if your question wasn't answered to follow up um, with me and I um, could pass along the questions um, to trainees here. Um, try to get back to screen sharing with you all. Oh, hmm. Oh, I think somehow I'm a participant. Mm -hmm. um, do any of you um, trainees have the ability to share? I got kicked off and I'm back on somehow as a participant, but I can probably do it um, without. Oh, do you need screen sharing? Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. what? Do you want me to share the PowerPoint? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. One moment. And basically um, what I wanted to do as we come to the end of the session was to talk about, you know, whether BU Urban is right for you. So I would say one important question to ask yourself is, does the mission excite you? Um, so the idea of working across disciplines to address urban environmental challenges, um, you know, working with nonprofits, the private sector, government entities to address these um, urban environmental challenges. Um, do you want to be part of an interdisciplinary cross campus community? Um, perfect, yeah. Um, do the workshops sound interesting to you? Um, and are you interested in doing the internship with um, one of our partners with government? NGO or the private sector? And do the course requirements sound interesting to you? Um, if so, I think consider us <laughs> in applying to the program. And next steps that um, you can take are um, continue to explore our website. If you haven't done that already, it's a great source of information. You can sign up for our bi-weekly e-newsletter, e e which is on our landing page of the website on the right side. Um, and you can follow us on our social media um, at BU, um, let me type it here, at BU underscore urban. Then, yeah, you can connect with trainees who are leaving their um, contact information. Um, you could schedule a meeting with me um, and then apply to um, our program by completing our online application um, on our website um, and having an instructor, academic advisor, and a supervisor submit a letter of recommendation on your behalf. So. Yeah, I think that's it for me. Um, thank you everybody for coming. I don't know if anybody else is here. <laughs> I can't, my screen is limited. So um, yeah, but I hope that you have found it helpful. And again, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Um, and the application deadline is January 12th at 5 p.m. So thank you 